And I give the call to the Honourable Member for Deakin to speak in response to the Minister's statement. Well, thanks very much, uh, Mr Speaker. It's time to end homelessness. That's the theme for this year's Homelessness Week, which is always an important occasion to acknowledge Australia's homeless and, of course, to raise awareness of the impact of homelessness and, of course, to advocate for the solutions to reduce homelessness, a constant battle in Australia. And although Homelessness Week is an annual event, um, we can't lose sight of this cause and we can't take for granted the fact that those experiencing homelessness in Australia, more often than, than not, are experiencing it for longer than the one week of Homelessness Week that we recognise each year. It's always a pressing issue that impacts the very heart of every local community around Australia. In particular, during Homelessness Week, we acknowledge and are reminded of the 122,000 individuals who experience homelessness on any given night, people without a stable roof over their heads and a place to call home. In 2021, nearly a quarter of all people experiencing homelessness uh, were tragically um, aged between 12 to 24. In 2021, again, nearly 20,000 people were aged over 55 and were experiencing homeless uh, and were experiencing homelessness at the time of the most recent census. As the minister outlined, we must remember that these figures can be desensitising, but behind each of them are real people with real potential and dreams and aspirations of their own. These figures always serve as a call to action, a call the a call to recognise the importance of reducing homelessness and the imperative for government to continue to adapt and evolve as the problem adapts and evolves. The primary source of government-funded assistance for individuals facing homelessness or those who are teetering on the edge, who are at risk of becoming homeless, is through our specialist homelessness services. And I'd like to praise the important work of the homelessness services across our country that go further than just those providing shelter, but also work to provide lifelines and short-term and emergency accommodation, health care services, critical mental health support, child protection services, drug and alcohol counselling, psychological assistance, legal services and so much more. In addition to the specialised intervention provided by these incredible organisations, they also provide general support and aid to those in need, available guidance and information, clothing, furniture, as well as essential life training skills, um, including cooking for yourself and other forms of support, even if it's just a conversation that a lonely person needs to have, or a friendly smile. Um, the services provide and ensure that these people are seen, they feel safe and are supported, and are importantly given the stability, dignity uh, and ultimately a chance for a better life. The holistic approach of these homelessness services and other supports not only addresses the immediate needs but also empowers individuals with the tools and resources that we hope will allow, allow them to regain stability and independence in society. These organisations really step up in times of crisis, and we all have them in our respective electorates. They extend a support that bring light into dark moments. I saw this firsthand recently when I spent some time helping out in my electorate with an organisation called Winter Shelter. Uh, it's a wonderful initiative. Winter Shelter is a Maroondah Churches and Community Response to Local Homelessness. Uh, they, during winter, uh, rotate between churches and provide uh, a bed, a meal and a whole lot more to those sleeping rough in our local area. They have one of many vital care services with the, mission, with the mission to provide shelter, food and to honour those in need. Homelessness Australia, I might add, notes that it's important for Australians to understand that homelessness is not rooflessness. 
with only 6 per cent of people who we would consider homeless sleeping rough. The majority of homelessness is in fact invisible, uh, with people experiencing homelessness in crisis accommodation, rooming houses, other forms of insecure housing, overcrowded dwellings uh, or an increasing phenomenon, which is couch surfing. And we need to remember that homelessness can't be divorced from the broader economic issues people are feeling and the complex and multifaceted nature of the mental health and addiction issues associated with many cases, which is why those additional services I outlined earlier are so important. Approximately 175,000 households are on wait lists for access to social housing across the country. To use New South Wales as an example, um, from June 22, the waiting list comprised 57,000 individuals, 51,000 on the general waiting list and 6,500 on the priority list. To secure, to secure a place on this list, an individual typically needs to demonstrate a desperate or utmost need. And according to the New South Wales government, individuals on the general wait list can anticipate waiting periods of 10 years or more. Imagine having to wait 10 years for a safe place to call home. Now, the minister did rightly note that, broadly speaking, over the 10 years to the 2021 census, um, homelessness and the statistic, grave though they are, hadn't increased. And I think it's quite remarkable that, given Australia's experience during COVID, that the former coalition government and, to their credit, state and territory governments around Australia were able to rise to the occasion. Uh, that was certainly an instance where, uh, as Housing Minister at the time, we were very fearful of the consequences of that economic shock on uh, those people who are homeless or imminently facing homelessness. So whether it was eviction moratoriums, whether it was the significant support provided through JobKeeper, JobSeeker and a myriad of other supports, and to their credit from state governments, both Labor and Liberal, uh, to provide additional support for those people, uh, we were able to ensure that the problem didn't get worse, it wasn't exacerbated in an extraordinarily difficult time. Um, the former coalition government obviously established the National Housing Finance Investment Corporation, uh, soon to be renamed Housing Australia. And we give credit to the government for taking that on and adopting the model that we created. A lot of work went into creating that body, um, coming up with the idea and putting it into practice. And uh, NIFIC was able to ensure that the Commonwealth Government, for the first time ever, really closely and in a direct way partnered with community housing providers, those organisations on the front line who I think um, stretch every dollar further than almost any other organisation. In that time, we were able to support 15,000 social and affordable homes. Uh, our $1 billion national housing infrastructure facility, which again, credit to the government, I think they've uh, taken that on and done good work to get that money out the door, also unlocked nearly 7,000 additional social and affordable dwellings. Uh, the first time that a Commonwealth government had directly invested uh, in that way. We also continued the National Housing and Homelessness Agreement, where we committed $1.6 billion annually. We worked very hard to also hold states more accountable, um, and I would encourage the government to, in their ne negotiations to try that again. Um, it's always a difficult challenge, uh, but important that we see the results for that money. Um, and we importantly guaranteed the homelessness funding within that agreement, and I'd expect that the government will take that forward and ensure that the homelessness portion is not only guaranteed but also indexed. Um, our focus on homelessness through the National Housing and Homelessness Agreement had a target of specific demographics with unique housing needs, including older Australians seeking stable homes, women and children affected by family and domestic violence, youths, Indigenous Australians, the long-term homeless and individuals transitioning 
uh, from institutions to homelessness. Uh, we worked hard to provide stability to the homelessness th sector, as I said, through our longer-term funding. And uh, I am hopeful and I have no reason to believe that the current government uh, won't do their best to try and continue those objectives. Um, Mr Speaker, in Homelessness Week, uh, it's an important time, as I said at the outset, to reflect on um, some of the individuals that, uh, that have so much potential uh, that are not just numbers uh, in an ABS report every five years, but are people who um, have enormous potential. And uh, the more that we can do from this place uh, to support those people, the better. And I think that will ensure that Australians not only, um, not only can feel proud of the support that they provide their fellow citizens, but also live in a more cohesive and harmonious society. Yeah.